Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Doctor's Lounge with myself, Dr. Ahmad Raoudi, as always, Dr. Sajad Ahmed, and today's special guest is Dr. Rob Morgan, a GP with us here in Bridgend, and also the Vice Chair of the Royal College of GPs in Wales. So welcome, everybody. Thank you. Hi. Good. And so we've got Rob with us today, and we thought we'd try and tailor the episode around the Royal College and find out a bit more for the people who are coming into GP practice or even those who have finished their training as a registrar about what the college does and what they can do for you. So, Rob, well, for those of you who don't know Rob Morgan, he's been a GP in Bridgend in tinnocoid surgery for quite some time now. And one of his other roles is doing appraisals as well as other things. And he's, as before, as pre-mentioned, sorry, the Vice Chair of the Royal College of General Practitioners. Um, so Rob, give you a little bit of background about how you actually managed to get involved with the college and what sort of drew you towards it uh, to begin with? Well, uh, you, you might be surprised to learn that it's actually quite a recent thing, even though I look so old. I've only actually been actively engaged over the last couple of years. And that's despite the fact that since I qualified a number of years ago, and like you say, I've been a GP in Bridgend uh, over the last 20 odd years or so, and I've paid my fees diligently and really not done anything with RCGP mm. until about four years ago. And four years ago, I was nominated for fellowship uh, by a colleague and I thought I'd uh, accept that nomination and became a fellow of the college. And that was done at the time um, on the basis that I thought it'd be a good thing to become perhaps more involved at that, that part of my career. So again, first time ever in over 20 years, I attended a faculty board meeting. <laughs> and it was one of those meetings where uh, they lock the door and don't let you out until you agree to do something. Right. And the faculty board at that time was looking for a representative um, person to go to the membership committee that was run by RCGP Wales. So I stuck my hand up and I became, in one fell swoop, I went from doing nothing for the college or with the college uh, to being the membership representative of the South East Wales faculty subsequently attended a meeting of that uh, membership committee only to find that the membership chair of that committee was uh, moving on and they were looking for a chair so in the next meeting i became the membership ch committee chair so all of a sudden i was getting start really engaged with the uh, college and that really did open up my eyes in terms of what goes on in in the college in Wales in college uh, nationally, and I've been lucky enough to be in there since and you know, thoroughly enjoy it, throw myself into it, and now I've uh, taken on the post of vice chair, um, policy and public affairs, and also still maintain the membership officer role for RCGP Wales. So short history, but meteoric rise, and I packed a lot in. So, um, I mean, you mentioned, I sort of alluded to, um, which which we all think about, and some of the GPs I've spoken to as well, you know, those who pay the membership feel like you've been doing for decades and and not really done much with it. The college almost seems like we are paying a fee for the occasional, even the CPDs and anything that webinars has comes through, a lot of you have to pay more to get access to those but we don't really get much advantage out of the college in terms of what can the college what is the college actually doing for us or yeah why should we carry on paying the fee for something that's not really motivating us to work or maybe talk about something completely non-clinical I, mean, I mean with yourself just sort of hinting to probably one of the answers which is in this question is that under your leadership, we've seen those, um, you know, uh, sort of the picture competitions and things like that to include the hobbies of the GPs into it. And that makes it a bit more lively. Sure. But if you look at the English side of the college or the Scottish side, um, to some extent, there's not a lot of 
things going on. So what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think that in part reflects the fact that, you know, we are a devolved faculty of RCGP. And so as a devolved faculty, we have perhaps a little bit more autonomy in the way we want to um, promote ourselves and engage our members. And it's really interesting, you know, like, what did the Romans ever do for us? That, that phraseology is transposed into lots, so many things, isn't it? What, mm. what does the college do for us? And I probably say to people, and I have said, um, well, what do you want it to do? Yeah, it's, it's no good someone saying, oh, well, what's it, what am I actually getting for my book? Well, what do you want to get for your book? And once, once you answer that question yourself, then you can truly say, okay, I'm not getting that. I've either got to try and change it or leave. And, you know, the easiest thing for me is that I, I don't really convince people to join the college or mm. be a member of the college. What's easy for me is to say, look, you are a member of the college. What do you need? What do you want to get from us? Mm. And how can I, as a membership officer or vice chair, um, in part provide that, you know, in that sort of framework. There's other bits of my role that I do that I also enjoy that I can easily tell you about. But that question about, well, what's the college doing for me? Well, what do you want it to do? Mm. And if it isn't doing it, do you want to change it? Or do you want to leave, you know? And that's, that's a perfectly valid choice for everyone. If I look back and think, well, Rob, what, that, what did you do for that 20 years? Well, I got the journal, rarely read it. Uh, might have done an, a module here and there, went to perhaps one or two meetings. But largely, it was apathy. You know, I, I didn't read, you know, I had other things going on. 500, uh, well, nowadays it's about 500 pounds, isn't it? Yeah. In those days, it was a bit less. Yeah. Uh, you know, 10 quid a week. What do I want to get for my 10 quid a week? I don't know, yeah. you know? Um, only you can answer that question. And if you say, well, I'd like something else, go the way we are, the way we are in Wales in particular, will tell us. And if we say, no, we can't do that. That's not our function or that's not our, in our remit, yeah. then you can make a choice, you know? Um, and it is very individual. If I was to say to you guys, you know, are you members of the Royal College? If you are, why, you know? Because it's probably members who've got a better argument than the hierarchy. Mm. And as a membership officer, I'm always quite keen to, okay, let's let's try and get a bit real. You know, it's okay people say, oh, that highfalutin idea, that's never going to work in my practice. Okay, tell us what works in your practice. And is that a universal feeling? Then that's perhaps what we should be advocating on, on members' behalves, you know? Mm. Mm. Well, it's interesting what you said about the sort of apathy and I think having sort of recently-ish qualified as a, as a, as a registrar now, fully, fully qualified, I find that a lot of people in my peer group have the same arguments that you just put forward that, oh, there's not really much that the college does for me, very uh, sort of apathetic. If they are members, they are sort of just sort of towing the line type membership. What do you think or why do you think that is? Why do you think the younger GPs coming through have that feeling towards a college or that, or perhaps it's just less exposure to what the college does or what it offers that makes them feel that it's not doing much or they don't want to continue being members? Yeah, I think, I think there's probably a good argument to make that AITs uh, can become engaged more with the college. And if AITs are engaged more with the college, when they become first fives, they're already aware of things, and hopefully that that involvement will carry on. In any, in any group, if you have a hundred people who are all doing something, there's always two or three that drift off completely. There's always two or three that will stay and be very proactive. Mm -hmm. Most of us are in the middle. Yeah. And in terms of most of us in the middle, it's only perhaps when you know, something really gets to us that we think, well, where can I go for some resources or where can I go for some help? Or we think, well, I've, I've had enough of this, I'm off. Uh, but most of us just toddle along quite happily without having any particular needs. 
there aren't any, you know, as interesting in your expression about toe in the line, there aren't any particular lines to toe because I think sometimes people don't know what's happening and so they might not know what's happening on their behalf. And that in one respect is why we've tried to perhaps engage members more in Wales. And mm. it's, you know, it, it works to some extent, but it doesn't work to all extents. And, you know, I don't think we can, we can satisfy everybody's needs, but we ought to be trying to satisfy the majority of needs. And if those needs are, a, I'm okay, I haven't really got a need, fine, you know? But if we don't ask the question, we're not going to find out. Um, in terms of AITs, we've got some very keen faculty board members who have been to um, things like um, the BTS afternoons and said, okay, this is what the college is here for, for you, not just as an AIT, but as um, a first five and a middle career doc. So there is that sort of like outreach, but it's very few and far, far between. Mm. Um, I, I have been lucky enough to go to, the perks of doing the college job is that you go to graduation ceremonies. And over the last few years, I've um, been lucky enough to be part of the graduation ceremony for new members in Hensel Castle. Mm. And there's so many Welsh GPs who are going to that now. Obviously, it's been postponed this year. Um, but it's a really good opportunity to chat to people and invest some sort of time in saying, okay, look, your local faculty, oh, so-and-so's there, or what are you thinking of doing subsequently? But even with that sort of proactive activity, and then perhaps subsequent emails to say, are you interested in our mentoring scheme, or have you heard about the Facebook forum? Mm -hmm. it's a very small percentage that actually follow up on that. Yeah. So you think, oh, I'm not too sure what else we can do. I have a great time in the graduation. It's a really happy, yeah. family orientated graduation. I'd recommend anyone listening to your podcast uh, when Wales is back online next year, come to Wales because it's a great place to graduate. Yes. Um, but even having that personal contact and meeting, you know, 15, 20 locally uh, positioned GPs, there's only one or two that I'm still perhaps seeing their names on posts or emails and things like that. Mm. Well, one thing I wanted to ask Rob about, um, you know, what college does. So when we look at the English college, it is doing many things, including things like international, MRCGP international and moving into, I think it's, many varieties of it so depending on the region African region and Indian subcontinent and Middle East etc yeah but um I was I haven't directly been involved with them but I have been involved in some sort of promotion of family medicine overseas and I'm sort of wondering would the Welsh college look into something like that um to perhaps bring in um trainees from abroad for work experience or um, from trainees from here going to other countries to get some work experience of general practice in, let's say, things like Namibia or South Africa. Yeah. How general practice is. So would there be any, uh, is there any plans for that? Is there any views on that? I think that that's an interesting question. And one thing I've realized in the last few years is that the structure that I've become part of is quite a, it's a gigantic beast, you know, it's a well-organized, uh, multifaceted um, organization with various branches. It was interesting that you said the English college. Uh, I think that was the phrase I heard. We, we tend not to use that expression. It's, it's UK-wide, mm -hmm. the college is UK-wide. Yeah. And underneath that, there are uh, the devolved faculties. And Wales is one of those devolved faculties. And I think that when health became devolved, it's been since then. Mm. So as an organization within Wales, we wouldn't really have the scope to take on uh, the sort of things that you're saying that might be more better placed in the international 
mm. relations department of a bigger organization. Mm. Uh, and I think that's part of the problem in a way that we think of it as the English college and we're not part of it, but it's a UK college yeah. and Wales is most definitely a part. And in fact, it's, even though we're a small country, yeah. we've probably got more of an identity than other parts of England who might actually be quite larger if you put bits together, you know? Yeah. Um, it's right we're passionate about where we are and it's right we're passionate when we're representing us as the world nation in the UK setting mm -hmm. that we do have a voice mm -hmm. because our needs, are, our needs are different in Wales mm -hmm. uh, to the rest of the UK, to Scotland, to Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just sort of following up on that point, how much influence do you have also in your role or perhaps as, as, the, as the college in Wales on, we we'll call it sort of the UK based college, the sort of the office back base in London, do they take, or do they much sort of feedback back and forth about your needs and the national needs or you, do you feed into that in any, in any way or is it more there, them and we're, we're us? Yeah, no, I, d I don't think it's a case of us and them. I think, you know, it's very difficult, isn't it? Whenever you're part of a, a group, you do have some sort of like sense of, um, you know, loyalty and support in your locality. We are very tribal, aren't we? Mm. So whenever I go to a, a meeting, it doesn't have to be RCGP, but I'm very conscious that I'm promoting a Welsh point of view. But my view may be, well, it is as valid mm. as someone who's promoting the Scottish and the Northern Irish and the English point of view. You know, so we're all having those sort of dialogues and we're all trying to be very uh, conscious of our devolved nation's needs in the context of the whole needs of the whole representative body, you know. Uh, in terms of, in terms of um, what happens and how you can influence something. Do you mind if I just tell you a really good example of how I can influence you something? Okay, how you can influence yeah. something? As part of our function in Wales, we're often asked by the uh, Senate, or the health committees, to provide evidence. And that evidence can sometimes result in appearances in front of the committee to give oral evidence. But most, most often than not, it's uh, submission of papers and then called if you're needed for further clarification. And there's a colleague of yourselves, myself, in Wales, who we asked to write uh, a paper around, um, I forget the actual name, but it's the smacking ban. I don't know if you can remember that. Yeah. So that paper, that, uh, ch uh, I can't remember the formal terms, chast reasonable chastisement. Yes. Um, but it was, a, you know, the smacking ban. So that GP, who's very busy and, you know, incredibly smart and committed to um, what she wanted to write about, wrote the position paper for us, appeared in front of the committee, and then brought it to uh, one of our regular meetings involving the whole of Wales called Welsh Council. And in that meeting, um, wondered if, if we had this opinion in Wales about uh, smacking and uh, chast chastisement, why not on a UK basis? Children's safeguarding issues are the same wherever, wherever they are. So it was put forward then to UK Council, um, and now it's been adopted by RCGP as an RCGB position mm -hmm. on uh, chastisement. So that, that doesn't happen every day, and I'm not saying that, oh gosh, anyone could come to a Welsh Council in the next minute, RCGP uh, President and Chair is talking about it on Radio, Radio 1 or Radio 4. Mm -hmm. But it is a good example of how someone has an idea and develops that, researches it, promotes it, and actually articulates it in such a way that it makes sense to so many people that we say, okay, well, this should be policy of RCGP. Mm -hmm. So that's happened. In terms of perhaps a bit more of a microcosm of influencing things, again, I think we're lucky in Wales, you know, Wales has got two really great joint chairs they are, they're not uh, co-chairs, they're joint chairs, so it's 
one position split between two very approachable you know Rebecca paying Paul Myers before mm -hmm. uh, very approachable and I think in Wales we've got that sort of philosophy haven't we you know that our emails uh, are easier to give out mm -hmm. than uh, perhaps in if you're in part of a much much bigger organization so could you guys have an opportunity to influence what's happening in RCGP Wales yeah you know how do you do that well you have a conversation you have an email you keep knocking someone's door and saying look this is a real problem what are you doing about it how how does it how does it work in practice well Myra you know it works in practice by Myra and Peter myself having an opportunity to present those views then in perhaps submissions of evidence uh, through conversations with Welsh government conversations with our BMA colleagues uh, because some of the stuff that members perhaps get very um, quite rightly so excited about uh, are perhaps more the domain of the BMA than RCGP mm -hmm. but having that initial conversation I think is very easy here and once that conversation's had then it can become a bit of work that RCGP Wales can take on and respond to members' needs. Mm. Um, you know, what we've done on the forum, on the uh, Facebook forum, stuff stuff that's on the forum now goes to policy meeting. We have a uh, executive meeting once a week mm. to talk about what's happening in the world, what RCGP is doing, what's the government doing, you know, what's important to members. So stuff that appears on the RCGP Wales Facebook forum Mm. goes to that meeting um, you know and it 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 makes this idea of ivory towers and people who are not connected with the membership a little bit sort of, uh, of a fallacy in Wales I think it does help it does help um, I think that's one of the place where we feel more comfortable interacting with fellow members and raising up issues both clinical, non-clinical, policy, um, different aspects really. And I found that quite useful. Um, which brings me to one of the questions that was on my mind and I sort of spoke to Imad about it, was the appraisals and during COVID-19. So, um, I mean, a lot of us have been sort of doing the online stuff and all that, but it's not the same as before COVID. No. no. Um, what's the college's policy on that or support on that in terms of how are we going to be going forward managing this? I mean, my appraisal is due, I think, January time as well. Um, what do we do with that? So there's, there's, first of all, reassure ourselves. That's, that's, a big, that's a big thing. One of the things that you mentioned earlier on is that I'm a, an appraiser as well and I've been lucky enough to be an, uh, been an appraiser for um, 17, 16 years uh, and one of the things I did with my appraisal hat and if I can just dip into that a second uh, recently was write a module for HEIW called Return to Appraisal. Mm -hmm. um, you know I, ca I can't say it's the best thing since War and Peace but uh, the feedback that's come in so far which there are only three elements Two people liked it, so it's probably okay. But it does reassure GPs that whatever you bring to this appraisal is is really just got to be what's relevant to you. And if you've only got one or two things that you want to bring, your appraiser is going to be fully accepting of that. And not only accepting, but quite supportive. Mm -hmm. Because the last six months of all of our lives has not been like any other and hopefully we won't meet it again mm. to to then have this idea that the appraisal system is ready and waiting now to jump on everyone and say okay where's your pvp and your your 10 item uh, questionnaire um you know it's not realistic is it no so that's that's outside college in terms of just some information i can give you but certainly you know, appraisers have had up-to-date training in how to perhaps approach this first post-COVID appraisal. 
there's the modules online that doctors can look to just to be reassured. And I would definitely reassure anyone who's going into their appraisal. In terms of what the college does, the college actually has a revalidation and appraisal working group that meets regularly. And the chair of that it has been very proactive in England, at least, in uh, putting forward a model called Medical Appraisal 2020. I don't know if you've heard of that. Mm. But, but essentially, in Wales, we're very, sorry guys, you know, I'm very Welsh. Uh, in Wales, we're very lucky. We've got a fantastic appraisal unit. Uh, and I've appraised for a number of years, and I'd hope that what I'm saying is reflected across the patch. You know, appraisal is supported in Wales. Yeah. It was deanery led and now it's HEIW led, which makes it very different from some appraisals uh, systems, which are CCG led or yeah. perhaps a little bit more performance management led. So we are, we are a little bit different. So in England, they've adopted this thing called uh, Medical Appraisal 2020, where appraisal information can essentially be submitted on a page of A4, mm -hmm. and it contains the most basic um, elements that you might need to inform a discussion. In Wales, we're slightly uh, set aside from that because we have the Mars system, which is Pan Wales. And when you read the return to appraisal modules, it says, you know, put stuff in that's important to you. Uh, don't think that you've got to populate it. I think it says two or three entries. Yeah. You know, you've got to you've got to be able to, as an appraiser, look at something and think, is that enough for me to think we can have a reasonable discussion? Yeah. But I suspect, even though the medical appraisal 2020 and the Welsh current folders have got very uh, different slants compared to last year, the conversation, the discussion with the appraiser is going to be the crux of getting information out to people and hopefully supporting people. Yeah. You know, over the last number of years, I've been privileged enough really to see some fantastic work going on under the most extreme circumstances within practice that you wouldn't really know about outside of that relationship between an appraiser and the mm -hmm. doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I certainly think from our training that we're going into this as appraisers with a very much minded, okay, this is yours. What do you want to do with it? I tend to start like that anyway, but mm. hopefully that would be a bit more universal. Did that answer that? Yes. I'm, yes. I'm rabbiting. No, no, it's, 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 we've covered actually a lot of topics in terms of RCGP and appraisal, which basically were the crux of today's. Um, we didn't want to plan it to be a too long of an episode, this one, because we're hoping we're going to get you back again <laughs> at another time as well. Um, I'll leave it to Imad if he's got any interesting questions, and then I think we would probably be closing it. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think a nice way to finish, uh, I think basically the crux of the conversation we've had today is a union or organization is only as good as its members. And if you're a member of the RCGP, as you said, rather than saying, well, what, what's the college doing for me? He said, well, how can I utilize the college and how can I do things to further my own development and, and GP's interests overall? Uh, so as a sort of closing area, I think probably you mentioned you, you may already have these conversations in the graduation day, but perhaps give you the floor now to just ask, a few things that the college does do but that people can get involved with people who may be coming out of AIT as you mentioned or even people who perhaps have been members for years but haven't really utilized or got involved with the college as much what things can people do what things can people get involved with and have an impact on with yeah. as, as, a, as a member of the RCGP so in term in terms of you know, you wake up tomorrow and you think, oh, I'm going to start um, being involved. I think the thing that people would find useful is that Wales has three separate faculties. 
those faculties have faculty boards which meet on a regular basis every quarter. And the topics that are discussed in there are very pertinent to what's happening, happening locally, but also uh, pertinent to the UK Council uh, meetings, which, are, which usually follow about a week later. In those faculty boards then, UK Council papers are discussed and each faculty board would have a rep that would go to UK Council and you know, put forward the views of um, that faculty board. So if there was one thing that you wanted to do, it might be worthwhile saying, okay, who's my local faculty? When is the next meeting? Uh, I have an ability there to influence what the faculty rep will say, you know, there's some heavy hitting things that are discussed in UK County, you know, views on assisted dying, views on appraisal, uh, you know, quite big things, policy things that the organisation as a representative organisation is asking people, okay, which way do you want to vote? So the more people that contribute to that decision from a faculty level, the, the safer you are in making your assumption that, oh, this is a representative view as opposed to thinking this is just someone who's really keen and want to you know, do, do a bit of uh, personal or professional development for themselves. The faculty board is also the place that develops local CPD for members uh, and will have insights into what's happening at the Wales level. Each faculty board has representatives that goes to the Welsh uh, Council Board. Yeah. At the Welsh Council Board, we uh, had in the summer by Skype, we had 30 odd members um, attend and it was fantastic. Not everyone contributed to the discussion, but loads of people contributed to the chat. So I think get involved in faculties. If you get involved in faculties, at least uh, you'd hear about what's going on and see if there's anything that tempts you in, in terms of your tastes and if you'd like to engage further. Uh, first five groups, um, they're not particularly active and we're always looking for first five members. You're likely to hear about things that UK, uh, not UK, uh, Wales is doing. So the mentorship scheme, you know, if you want to become a mentor for someone, if you wanted to be mentored, you know, people don't know about this. Uh, and if you wanted to do a bit of promotion of uh, general practice to younger people, you know, we have a schools database, we have um, events that we're putting on for schools uh, where we are trying to promote general practice. So there's things to get involved in, but I don't think people know about. Yeah. Mm. So I think, you know, like there's always the newsletters that you can get through the post, but I think there's nothing quite like going to a faculty board and thinking, Oh yeah, I've tried that now. I kind of like it, yeah. or I've tried that. It's not for me. Um, I'll step back, and I'll, I'll either carry on being a member or not. You know. Yeah, the, the school one was quite nice because I've, I've been involved in a few of those uh, where I've been to the local schools, and that was quite interesting. It was enjoyable. <laughs> half day. Well, we we were supposed to do one last in September but it's gone online now and it's in three weeks time and we have over 300 people signed up for it uh -huh. um, and 40 some parents. Cause I think it's part of us trying to widen access for pupils and their parents are in the dark about what it's all about. Oh, it's all about yeah. So hopefully if I talk to you next time, it will be after that event and I'll tell you how well or how uh, not so well. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming. It was really, really nice. No, that's uh, fine. And no, no, nice to see you. Both. <laughs> and hopefully, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll be seeing you soon. Sometime, sometime perhaps in person, but yes. more likely on more likely on Zoom. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you everybody for listening again. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, if you do like what you're hearing, please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. And if you've got any suggestions for things you want to talk about or uh, here, then please just drop us a message and uh, we'll try and well make a podcast which is interesting to you. Or if you want to get involved, drop us a message as well. So thank you again, Dr. Sajad and our guest, Dr. Rob Morgan. It's been a pleasure and hopefully we'll have you back on again. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.